On the first one, it says that a line that passes through the origin and the point a comma 10 and it says it forms an angle of 26 degrees uh, with the x-axis and so I want to find the coordinate uh, missing coordinate of point P so one thing I'll notice here is that if I drop a perpendicular it makes a right triangle <clears throat> I know this side length is 10 uh, sorry, the side length is 10, the side length is A. And um, so I know that the tangent of 26 degrees is going to be equal to 10 over A. And so if I multiply by A on both sides, I'll get A tangent of 26 degrees is equal to 10. And then I can divide that over. I get A is equal to 10 over tangent of 26 degrees. And if I plug that into my calculator, make sure I'm in degree mode when I do I get 20.05. Twenty point five zero. Sorry. Okay. Uh, number twenty six. It says uh, we have tangent theta is twenty eight. I need to find theta, an angle in a right ang triangle. Give your answer in degrees, rounded to two decimals. Um, so I'm going to just do uh, tangent inverse uh, in my calculator. Tangent inverse of 28. And see what my calculator gives me. I got 87.95 degrees. And it says that the angle theta is inside of a right triangle. So that's theta. This is a right triangle. So I know that that must be something um, between 0 and 90 degrees. And I can see that the answer that I got is within that range. So I'm done. Number 27 says given uh, A is 10 and C is 12, find the missing side and angles in degrees of a right triangle. Um, and I think typically when we label uh, a right triangle, we label, label uh, C as the side that's across from the right angle, and that's what it says here. C is across from the right angle, so I'm going to label that 12. And then I'm going to label um, this either one. I could label 10 as side A, and side B is what I don't know. <clears throat> So I can find side B, and this is angle B, and this is angle A. Okay, and so uh, side B I can find because I know that 10 squared plus B squared is equal to 12 squared. So I can find side B. And I get that b squared is equal to 44. So b is equal to the square root of 44, or I could write that as 2 square roots of 11 if I want to. Um, so that's side b. I know that angle a, that I know that um, cosine of angle b is equal to um, the adjacent over hypotenuse. So B is equal to cosine inverse of 10 twelfths. Um, does it say it wants the angles and degrees? So we'll do cosine inverse of 10 divided by 12. That gives me 33.55 degrees. 
33.56 degrees. Oh, round to one decimal, 33.6 degrees. And then I can find angle A because I know that angle A plus B plus C needs to equal 180 degrees, and so I could subtract that from 90. Angle A is equal to 90 degrees minus 33.6 degrees. And I get 56.4 for that. Um, okay, so on the next one, it says I want to, I'm given a figure here. And I know the angle of elevation from the bottom of the building to the top of building B is 48 degrees. So let's label that on our picture. From the bottom of building A to the top of building B is 48 degrees. 48 degrees. When standing on the roof of building A, the angle of elevation to building B is 32 degrees. So that means that if I put a dotted line here, that this angle is 32 degrees. And then if the buildings are two, 300 feet apart, how tall is building A? Okay, so the first thing I could do is I could find the height of building B by using this triangle. I know I have 300, so I'm just gonna write it up here, 300. This is the height of building B and this is 48 degrees. So I can use just this part of the triangle, I'll make it in red, I use this triangle here to find the height of building B. So let's do that. I know that um, tangent of 48 degrees is equal to um, B over 300. And so I know that B is equal to 300 tangent of 48 degrees. Oops, that's a degree symbol. Um, and so that is 333.81. Oh, 1 8, I mean. Uh, around to the nearest bullet, so 333 feet. Okay. And now I, I know that height. Um, the next thing I could do is I could look at this triangle here, the green triangle. So let's think about that green triangle. So I have 32 degrees and 300. And I'm gonna call this height H, and that's like this height, this part of my building. <clears throat> and so I know that tangent of 32 degrees is equal to H over 300, or in other words, H is equal to 300 tangent of 32 degrees. Whoops, 32 degrees. And so if I type that in, I get 187.46. Okay, and so I know that the height of um, the height of building A is going to be equal to B minus H. So B is that whole height of building B, and H is this bit. So if I subtract that off, I'll get the height of building A. So the height of building A is going to be equal to 333 minus 187. Okay. Uh, the next one. I'm going to solve some trig equations. 
So I want to find some approximate solutions to uh, this on the interval uh, from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, and I want to round that to two decimal places, okay? And so the first thing I might do is I might uh, find the inverse cosine in my calculator of negative 0 0.43. And if I do that, and notice here that the angles that are measured are in radians already, so I'm gonna make sure that my mode is switched to radian mode for this question. And so I'll do cosine inverse of negative 0.43 and that gives me 2.015. I went around to two decimal places, so 2.02. Okay. And if I think about where that is, um, that's going to be in that second quadrant. So um, if this is cosine is negative 0.43, that's the x coordinate. Okay, and so that means I'm here, negative 0.43, and then this is my angle um, in the second quadrant. But I also know that I have this corresponding reference angle here in the fourth quadrant. Um, okay, and so uh, what, what will that one be? So I know that this angle here is uh, is uh, 2.02, .02. but I know this angle here with the red terminal side is going to be 2 pi minus 2.02, .02. and so if I do that, because 2 pi would be all the way around, but then I'm going back 2.02, .02. so if I do 2 pi minus 2.02, .02, I get uh, one, I get, sorry, excuse me, I get 4.26. So this is 4.26. Okay. And so I think I'm ready to write them down now. I want to do um, everything between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. So I have two uh, positive angles. So I have 2.02. Um, .02. I have 4.26. And then if I go backwards, what is this angle? If I go backwards, that's negative 2.02. .02. And this angle here, going all around to that, what is that? Well, that's going to be negative 4.26. Okay. So I'll write those down as well. So those are my two solutions. my four solutions, really. And I can see why there would be four solutions on the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, because if I draw out the graph of cosine, what's the graph of cosine look like? It looks like this. And if I think about when the x-coordinate, or sorry, when the cosine value is negative 0.43, that's here. And I want to see how many times does it hit my graph. There, 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 and there. And so those are where my solutions are. Those correspond to my four solutions that I graphed on my unit circle. So for the next one, it says I want to find all the exact solutions to this one. So we'll need to do a little bit of algebra here to find out what's happening. So the first thing I want to do, I'll just write out the problem just like it is. So I've got 5 sine theta minus 1 equals 3 sine theta minus 7. And so I can start by distributing the 5. So I get 5 sine theta minus 5 is equal to 3 sine theta minus 7. And then I'm going to move the um, things that have sine on it all to the same side, and I'll also move the things that are just numbers over to the other side. So we'll do that. So 5 sine theta minus 3 sine theta is 2 sine theta. 
is equal to, and if I add 5 to that, I'm going to get negative 2. So I get sine theta is equal to negative 1 when I do that. And if I remember what sine theta means, sine theta corresponds to the y coordinate on my unit circle. So when is sine theta equal to 1, negative 1? Well, when is the y coordinate on the unit circle equal to negative 1? Well, it's down here at the bottom. Um, so at this coordinate, that's when the, the y coordinate is negative 1. There's only one place where the y coordinate is negative 1 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So what angle does this correspond to? Well, this corresponds to, this is pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2. For the next one, it says find all exact solutions to this thing here. So let's spend a little time with some algebra on this. Cosine theta is equal to 1 over 4 cosine theta. So I can multiply both sides by 4 cosine theta, and I'll get 4 cosine squared theta equals 1, and I can uh, divide that over whole thing by 4, so I'll get cosine squared equals 1 fourth, and then I can square root both sides. I'll get cosine theta is equal to plus or minus, and when I do the square root of 1 fourth, that's 1 half. Okay, and so if I want all of the angles that have cosine theta equal to 1 half, I can draw that. Cosine, remember, is the x coordinate, so cosine, if cosine is 1 half, um, then that's at pi over 3, and um, cosine is also positive 1 half at um, 5, oh, sorry, how many pi's over 3? 1 pi over 3, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 3, and then cosine is negative 1 half at um, 2 pi over 3, and... 4 pi over 3. So if I wanted to write down all the solutions, then that would be theta is equal to pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And all of those I can add 2 pi k. Um, so that's all the solutions on number 31. Okay, on number 32, it says the temperatures of a lake water rise and fall in 24-hour cycle. Um, the minimum temperature was 45, and the max temperature was 55. Okay, and um, 45 occurred at 4 a.m., and 55 occurred at 4 p.m., Okay, so that's the minimum and that's the maximum, and it's going to be modeled by a sinusoidal function. So it's going to cross through that midline halfway in between. So the midline is at 50 degrees. The question asks, when is the temperature in the lake 50 degrees? So that's going to be when it goes through that midline, which will be halfway between 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. So if I look for halfway between 4 a.m. and 4 p.m., that will be 10 a.m. So six hours after 4 a.m. will be 10 a.m., and so that's when the temperature reaches 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so at 10 a.m.